collective, it's the end, and this is going to be my October wrap up. So for October, I read a total of six books, and a couple of them did come from Spookathon, which I didn't do a full wrap up for just because I didn't read enough. Um, and I figured I would just do kind of a whole monthly wrap up and include them in this. And I think uh, October has the, on average, the lowest rated books. Um, I just didn't really love most of the things that I was reading, and um, I just felt that most of them were just okay. So uh, let's just go ahead and dive right in and show you guys what I read. The first book that I read in October is Good As Gone by Amy Gentry. This is a psychological thriller that follows our main character, Julie, who when she was 13 was kidnapped from her house and then it picks up eight years later and this woman claiming to be Julie appears on her doorstep and you learn throughout the story um, that this woman might not be Julie. Um, it, she's kind of an un... A reliable narrator and you don't know if this is Julie or something happened to Julie and she's taking her place. Um, it is said that it is for fans of Gone Girl and Girl on the Train and I enjoyed both of those so I had a lot of expectations going into this and they fell flat. Um, I ended up only giving this 2.5 stars. I just was not really enjoying it. Um, it wasn't very long so it did only take a couple days to get through and it wasn't really what I was expecting. I was expecting a little bit more kind of um, spooky, thrillery read, and it kind of ends up being more of a contemporary-ish. Um, and I just didn't really feel like you get much from the characters. Um, it's told in, a, there's a lot of back and forth between flashbacks. One plot line is told forward and one plot line is told backwards and they somehow connect and intertwine. And for me, I just felt that this was just okay. Um, comparing it to Gone Girl and Girl on the Train, I think isn't fair to this because it is nothing like those two. And um, it makes you kind of have really high expectations if you enjoyed those. And I just feel like the writing was just okay. It wasn't really anything spectacular. Um, and you, there isn't really much to the characters. There's not really much character development. There's not really much plot development. Um, very predictable. And it's marketed as more of a psychological thriller suspense novel. And I did not feel that this was very suspenseful. And um, I just didn't really care about the plot. So I ended up only giving this 2.5 stars. The next book that I read is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. This is a sci-fi thriller about Jason Dustin Deason, about Jason Deason, who is just going about living his life and one night gets abducted and masked and then uh, wakes up in a alternate reality where his life is no longer his life. His family doesn't exist. His wife is not married to him. Um, and you follow him figuring out what happened, what's going on, why is this a dream? Is he, which Jason is the real Jason? Um, and you slowly learn through the story kind of what happened. Um, this was another one that I felt was just kind of okay. Um, I did give this 3.5 stars. I felt that the, the concept was really interesting and this whole kind of like sci-fi element to it. Um, and Jason doesn't really, I don't feel like Jason has a lot of character development in this. Um, and I don't feel that the writing was really great. But I really enjoyed the concept. There are some interesting plot turns that do happen. Um, and I just didn't, but I don't feel like there's much character development for really any of the characters. Um, there's no really, you don't really get to have any connection to the characters. And so for me, I end up giving this a 3.5 stars. The next book that I read was actually just the one official book that I read for Spookathon. And that was City of Ghosts by Victoria Schwab. This is everywhere at booktube, um, doesn't really need any explanation about what it's about. I really, really enjoyed this. I loved Cassie and Jacob's relationship. It was just such a great, pure, genuinely innocent friendship and just such a great message and 
and I love the Scotland aspects and the Edinburgh and being able to kind of see it in my head. I love Victoria Schwab's writing. I've loved everything that she's written. I really, really enjoyed this. I gave it 4.5 stars. Um, it didn't give it a 5 just because it did take a little bit of time for me to get going and kind of get it going. Um, and with it being such a short book, I feel like it should have gripped me right from the beginning, but I ended up giving it four points die at five stars, and this was my favorite read for October. And the other book that I read, I started during Spookathon but didn't quite finish um, during Spookathon, and that is A Babysitter's Guide to Monster Hunting by Joe Ballerini. This is another middle grade novel. It follows our uh, main character Kelly, who is a babysitter during Halloween, and she uh, loses her kid that she's babysitting, Jacob and then mayhem ensues um he gets kidnapped by monsters and they have to rescue him and there's a whole group of like a babysitter's guild who fight monsters and um, rescue children i thought this was really cute really fun i ended up giving it 3.5 stars um um i felt that it did take a little bit of time to get going um, but it does have some really cute uh, pictures throughout and some really kind of multimedia formats. You get some kind of journal entries from the like guide of like from like the monster hunting guide. But um, it did take a little bit of time to get going and it's it's like 330 pages which was more than I was expecting um, and for 340 page book there's just I didn't feel like it could have what happened could have been maybe could have been another like 50 pages shorter um but i really enjoyed it i thought it was very cute it was a perfect kind of spooky halloween read for like a younger audience and so i ended up giving it 3.5 stars i also listened to the audiobook for toil and trouble i did start this during the spookathon as well and just never got around to finishing it but i did end up finishing it for this month and i gave it a i gave it a 3.5 stars I um, enjoyed some of the stories a lot more than the other ones and on average it kind of averaged out to 3.5 stars. Some of the stories were just okay. I really enjoyed the first couple ones um, but for me Toil and Trouble was just okay. Um, it was I was wanting maybe a little bit more most of them were more contemporary and I think I was wanting a little bit more of like fantasy elements maybe like more witchcraft elements and more like spooky elements um but most of them did kind of have more of a contemporary um feel and so for me it just wasn't something that i absolutely loved and i gave it 3.5 stars and uh, the last book i read in october um is hocus pocus and the all new sequel i am really upset that i did not like this book more i ended up giving it two stars um I think the only reason why I got two stars was because the first third of the book is basically the novelization of the movie, like it's even like the dialogue is all the same, and I feel like for me, I, I mean I love reading, don't get me wrong, but I could have just watched the movie, like it didn't really bring, the Hocus Pocus didn't bring anything new to the story, it didn't bring anything extra, and this book is a chunker, it's like 500 and something pages. And the first third of it, um, I, I could have just watched the movie. Um, the entire time reading Hocus, the Hocus Pocus part, like the first part of Hocus Pocus, I just envisioned the movie in my head and it didn't do anything extra. And then the sequel was a disaster. Um, I just was not a fan from the beginning. I didn't, I did enjoy the, that like there was some queer represent I enjoyed that there was some female female like a female female relationship between Poppy and I'm not even remembering her name um but it was just it felt like a modern um like all of the reboots that are happening for like shows that came out in the 90s that aren't really that good but everyone's trying to pretend like they enjoy and I just I did not like the sequel, I didn't like the writing, I felt like it was just like basically trying to cash out on the Hocus Pocus fandom and I just was not a fan of this. I ended up giving it two stars. Um, thinking about it more, I might even even lower my rating, but I feel like two stars is pretty generous. It took me forever to read this and it shouldn't, like the font is huge. It's 
not even like there's not like really it's not this like epic fantasy book or anything but I did not like this um, this is my lowest rated book all month I'm really glad that I ended up getting this from the library and didn't spend money on it because I could have just watched the movie and the sequel was completely unnecessary and was a waste of time in my opinion and um, yeah so I'm glad I didn't spend money on this because I could I spent my money watching the movie buying the movie instead and I'm really really disappointed in this so here are the five books that I've read physically in October. Let me know down in the comments below what you read in October, if you've read any of these, any thoughts, comments, and opinions. I will be doing full reviews for Good Is Gone and Dark Matter on my channel, so keep an eye out for those. As always, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit subscribe if not already. Thank you so much for watching, happy reading, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!